Good day, everyone. Thank you again for joining. Let's open the curtains for today's event. Today, we have Hossein with us as the speaker. If you have any question during the webinar, feel free to ask in the Zoom chat. We will be answering in the QA part of the webinar. So let's jump into the program. Hossein, if you may start. Thank you, Nazmul, for giving me the opportunity. Hello, everyone. I am Hossein Mahmoud, software engineer of Apps Code. In today's webinar, we are going to see how to use GKE workload identity with Stash. So let's see, see the contents of today's webinar. First, we will see a brief introduction about Stash. Then we will see how to set up GKE workload identity. Then we will deploy a database and insert some data into it. After that, we are going to take backup of that inserted data. Then we will simulate a disaster scenario. And then we are going to restore our backed up data to the database. And in the final part of the webinar, there will be a question answering session. If you have any question, you can ask in that part. So let's, let's start with the Stash introduction. Stash is a cloud native data backup and recovery tool for Kubernetes. Using Stash, you can backup Kubernetes workloads, volumes, and databases. Stash integrates with the Kubernetes CSI driver that provides CSI snapshots. In Kubernetes, you have to create a snapshot for each PVC. So if your application has multiple volumes, you have to create multiple snapshots. Stash automates these things. You just need to target the workload in Stash, it will automatically take backup of all the volumes for the workload. Stash also uses RESTIC under the hood, so it can deduplicate your backup data. Deduplication means Stash will only upload the data that is new to the previous backed up data. It will not upload the whole data again, so it saves a significant amount of network traffic. Stash also comes with built-in Prometheus monitoring. So now let's take a look at the supported applications by Stash. You can take backup of Kubernetes volumes and various databases, including PostgreSQL, MongoDB, Redis database, etc., and many more. These are the supported platforms by Stash. You can deploy Stash in any Kubernetes cluster like GKE, Amazon, EK, EKS, Rancher, DigitalOcean, etc. And these are the supported storages. You can store your backup data in any S3 compatible storage, cloud, uh, Google Cloud Storage, Microsoft Azure Storage, etc. You can also store your backup data in a network file system or NFS. You can install Stash using the Helm command. Uh, here I have provided uh, provided the installation instruction. And I have also provided the inst uh, installation guide link. You can check the link or when you will uh, install a stash on your system. Now let's see why do we need workload identity and how to set up it. So workload identity allows workloads in your GKE clusters to impersonate identity and access management service accounts to access Google Cloud services. So this feature enables Stash to backup data to Google Cloud Storage without any access credentials. Now let's see how to set up workload identity. So we will need a IAM service account, uh, which will contain the necessary role. In our case, it is storage.objectadmin. This role grants full control over objects, including listing, creating, viewing, and deleting objects. And then we will need a Kubernetes service account. And we have to annotate this Kubernetes service account with the email address of IAM service account. Then we will bind this Kubernetes service account with that IAM service account. And Stash will use this service account to backup and restore the data. And here are the commands to set up workload identity. We we will use gcloud CLI 
here we uh, we are creating a, a IAM service account named bucket accessor. After that, we are adding the required role. Then we are creating a Kubernetes service account, which is bucket user. After that, we are annotating this service account. And finally, we are binding that service account with the IAM service account. So let's execute these commands. So on the right terminals, we are watching for the resources related to the backup and restore. And on the left, we are executing our commands. So let's create the IAM service account first using gcloud CLI. So the bucket accessor service IAM service account has been created. Now let's add the required role to it, which is storage.objectadmin. It's taking some time to execute the command. So the role has been added. Now let's create a Kubernetes service account bucket user in the demo namespace. So let's create the namespace first. So the namespace has been created. Now let's create the service account. Bucket user. So the service account has been created. Now let's annotate this service account with the email address of the IAM service account. So the service account has been annotated. Now let's bind this service account with the IAM service account. Okay, so the bind, uh, so the binding is completed. So this is how the GK workload identity setup is done. Now we are going to deploy our database and insert some data into it. And here we are going to deploy a standalone MariaDB database using KubeDB. So this is the YAML of the MariaDB standalone database uh, uh, instance. So let's deploy this database. So the database has been deployed. Now let's wait for the database to be ready. So the database is running. Now let's exec into the database and insert some data. Okay, now let's create a database named uh, company. Now let's create a table named employees in this company database. So the table has been created. Now let's insert some data into it. Now let's show the data from this table. So there are two data, uh, two rows here in this table. Now let's exec exit from this database. So the data insertion is complete. Now we are going to take backup of this inserted data. And this is our backup flow. So here user creates a repository first and this repository contains the information about the backend. For example, it uh, contains the name of the bucket uh, where the data will be stored and also the path where uh, the data is going to be stored. And also it contains an encryption secret. 
uh, that is going to be used by stash to encrypt the backup data uh, then user creates a backup configuration and in the backup configuration uh, user specifies the schedule uh, that determines how frequently the backup will be taken place and the target of the backup etc and stash operator watches for this uh, backup configuration resource when it finds a backup configuration it creates a cron job according to the schedule and this cron job periodically triggers backup session and when it trigger uh, when it creates a backup session stash operator watches uh, for backup session also and when it finds a backup session it resolves the uh, um, it resolves the add-on uh, which is in our case mariadb backup and according to that add-on uh, stash operator creates a backup job and this job gets the connection information from the app binding uh, to access the database and uh, using that connection information the job uh, dump the data and send it to the uh, cloud storage and when all of these are done uh, the backup job, uh, job sends matrix to the stash operator so this is how the backup works now let's prepare our backend so First, we will create a secret, uh, which is encryption secret that will be used by Stash to encrypt the backup data. And then we are going to create a repository. And as we are using Google Cloud Storage, we are providing the bucket and the path where the data will be stored. And also here we are providing the encryption secret. So let's create these resources. So the secret has been created. Now let's create the repository. Okay. So the repository has been created. Now we are going to backup our data and uh, this is the backup configuration. And, and here we are providing the service account name that we have created earlier, uh, which is bucket user, and that is binded with the IAM service account. So uh, Stash will use this service account to backup and restore the data. And here we are providing the repository, which is GCS repo. And here we are also providing the target of the backup. In our case, it is sample MariaDB, and uh, it is the app binding name for the MariaDB database. And in the retention policy, we specify how the cleanup will uh, uh, cleanup will, will work. In our case, it will keep the last five snapshot and uh, the rest will be deleted. So let's create this backup configuration. So, the backup configuration is not ready. Okay, let's describe it. Okay, I, I think I, I uh, created the secret with the wrong name. So let's create the secret again. So the encryption secret has been created. Uh, yes, the backup configuration is ready now. So um, backup session will be created in every five minutes, but we can uh, yeah, take an instant backup using uh, Stash CLI. So 
let's trigger an instant backup using kubectl stash trigger command. So a backup session has been created and the backup pod is running. So let's wait for the backup to be completed. So you can see the backup is succeeded. Now let's uh, let me show you the backup data into the in the uh, Google Cloud Storage. So this is our directory webinar, and here we can see the backup data, and here are the snapshots. So data is stored there. So our backup is completed. Now we are going to simulate a disaster by deleting the data from the database. Before deleting the data, uh, I have to pause the backup because if, uh, if I don't pause the backup, another backup can be taken place after deleting the data. So let's pause it using stash CLI. So the backup has been paused. So you can see that true appears here. Okay, so now let's exec into the database again to delete the data. Let's drop the company database. So let, uh, let's see the uh, databases again. So you can see the company database has been deleted. Now we are going to restore the backup data into our database again. Um, so uh, he, here is the restore flow. Uh, user first creates a restore session. This restore session contains the target application where the backup data will be restored and stash operator watches for the restore session when it finds a restore session it resolves a corresponding restore add-on in our case it is mariadb restore and according to the add-on it uh, the operator creates a restore job and the restore job gets the connection information for the uh, to connect with the database from the app binding and it gets the backend information from the repository so the restore job uh, connects to the backend storage using the backend in uh, using the repository and it download the backup data and after that it insert the downloaded data into the database and this is how the restore is done and when all of all of these are completed restore uh, restore job send matrix to the stash operator so let's restore our data and this is the restore session yaml and here you can see we have provided the service account name similarly uh, as backup configuration and it is bucket user and we have also provided the repository name gcs repo that is same as our uh, uh, backup app configuration and we have also provided the target and this is uh, same as uh, sample mariadb now let's uh, create this restart session. So the restart session has been created. Let's wait for it to be completed. And you can see the restart session is succeeded. So let's verify our data by checking our database. So let's exec into the database again. Let's show the databases.
So you can see the company database uh, has been restored. Now let's check the data in the table we have created earlier, which is company. So you can see the table has the data we have created earlier. So our restore has been done successfully. So that's all uh, for the uh, workload identity setup and using it with the stash. So if you have any question, you can ask. Uh, we have, have a question in the YouTube chat. So the user asked, does Stash have any support to NFS storage classes? Yes, Stash has support for NFS storage class. Uh, we got a comment from Dennis on the chat. Uh, thanks, Dennis. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, uh, one quick question. So for GKE, uh, from which version of Stash does it support for the workload identity? Uh, okay, uh, we, here we are using the latest version. So. Uh, Stash version 2022.06.21, uh, this support workload identity. Yes. Okay, thanks. Um, and can I use workload identity, the corresponding feature from other uh, cloud providers like AWS, uh, IRSA, or uh, Azure's pod identity? Yes, Stash has support for the AWS, IRSA, and also support for the Cube to IEM uh, for AWS, but Stash has not the support for Azure yet, but we will uh, we will add it to Stash soon. Thank you. You're welcome. So with this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all for your lively participation today. We hope to see you again next time. Our upcoming webinars are already scheduled on our website. Visit appscode.com slash webinar to register. Have a nice day.